I should have uh, rolled out the black tie, knowing that we were going to have this very special guest in the studio this afternoon. He's uh, been a batting all-rounder uh, for Australia. I have to be honest, growing up in Australia, Neil, mm-hmm. he had one of the most mimicked bowling actions. Oh, is it? The way the right arm used to sort of come in, the left arm used to come in over the top. <laughs> so everyone in the backyard always used to like him. Two World Cups for Australia, 87 and 99, where uh, rumour has it he was Steve's right-hand man mm-hmm. for that 99 World Cup with Steve War. Uh, he coached Sri Lanka to two World Cup finals. He's worked with the IPS with the Sunrises Hyderabad and he's also here to help promote the UAE International T20 League Tom Moody welcome to TSB great to have you here it's great to be here too thank you for the very generous uh, welcome uh, it's always nice to be around cricketing people yeah well Neil here has actually been a commentator and the batting coach for the UAE men's side for many a year so I'm sure maybe you could learn something off him <laughs> you never know <laughs> you, you, you always have to have an open mind everyone's got a way definitely no, obviously yes We are on the verge of the ILT20. Desert Vipers and Tom Moody joining hands together. Uh, Tell me how did it all happen when you were told that, listen, let's join hands for the ILT20. Yeah, look, it's very exciting, as you say, to have a a franchise tournament here in the UAE that embraces the the, the cricket community here uh, is really important. We've seen how important that is. Uh, you know how that's folded, uh, unfolded throughout uh, the cricketing world with the IPL, with the Caribbean League, uh, the Big Bash in Australia, and so on and so forth. To have their standalone tournament here is really important, and for me to be involved with the Desert Vipers is a great thrill. Uh, it's uh, obviously a new venture for the owners. It's a new venture for us all in a new territory. Uh, certainly cr- cricket here in the UAE is big. Right. We know that. It's got a very strong following. There's got great, certainly got great facilities here. And, uh, you know, we you know, really do hope that uh, this tournament does take off, which I'm sure it will because of the quality of cricketers that uh, have been attracted to this tournament. Um, and uh, is something that's the, the beginning of something big. You're working as the, the director of cricket. When it comes to coaching a T20 side, generally the bulk of the players uh, are from that country, and then you get a couple of internationals mm. thrown into the mix. Here it's flipped around the other way, and the bulk are going to be internationals. Mm. How does that work as a coach when you need to bring together so many different people of cultures and nationalities? I think that's the, the really exciting part of being involved in franchise cricket is working with a variety of different cultures. Um, not only from a from, from a point of view of learning, you know, what people's backgrounds are and what their you know what their you know traditions are and respecting those and understanding those, but from a cricketing perspective, it is it's, it's such a, a, a you know a a positive way to you know grow and understand you know every element of the game you know you you may have a certain way of doing things in Australia or England or wherever it may be but you know across the world everyone's got their own ideas and everyone's got their own uh, ways of doing things and I think going into these types of tournaments you need to go in with a very open mind and an open mind to looking to learn and grow yourself. I mean, you, you mentioned about, you know, com- people coming in from different walks of life, literally. Uh, that That's how even the coaching staff looks like. We've got James Foster, we've got, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mahmoud, Azhar Mahmoud coming in as the bowling mm-hmm. coach. Uh, what can be expected from a, a set of coaches who come from different backgrounds, mm-hmm. different countries, different set of experiences, coaching again a different set of people altogether? Yeah. Look, we, we, we made a conscious effort of trying to get a, a real broad spectrum of coaches that have got a great deal of experience uh, you've got Neil McKenzie from South Africa as well as batting right. coach. You've got Simon Helmet from Australia who's had success around the you know the franchise global world. Um, and the list goes on. And I think it's an opportunity for those coaches to learn off each other. But more importantly, it's an opportunity for not only the internationals but the local talent to learn from those coaches. True. You know, we're fortunate enough to to have four UAE players that, uh, that, we'll, that we'll be selecting in a draft process in November um, and two of those will be playing in the playing 11. So it, what a great opportunity for those players to be playing alongside a lot of experience international franchise players and, and, and you know, World Cup winners in some cases. Um, and to grow their, you know, to grow their expertise, but then pass that down the chain in the community here in, uh, in the UAE. You've got the role as the director of cricket. Mm-hmm. How does that different from, uh, differ from being a coach? I mean, is it where you... You don't have to have to do the press conferences after the game when yeah. you might want to when say you, things yeah. you can't. Probably when you lose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go in there, boss. Go yeah. and sort it out, will you? Um, no, look, it's 
It's an interesting one because uh, I, I sort of look at it in the way that you're nearly sitting in a helicopter now in, in the role as director of cricket. You you put in place key personnel. Uh, we talked about support staff, various disciplines with that support staff. Uh, so you're responsible for that. You're responsible for their day-to-day operation and accountability in that in that role. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're nearly you're nearly viewing it like you're sitting in a helicopter over the top of that and passing on your expertise and advice. And if there's anything that you feel that you know could be uh, looked at slightly differently, you, you have your input. But at the end of the day, I think it's really important that everyone. Uh, takes responsibility of their role and you give them the freedom to express themselves in that role. But then, you know, uh, players like these, like you mentioned, Cam Green has a lot of time on his hand. Uh, But then there's another guy who actually rose out of franchise league cricket, Tim David, and got a call for Mm. Australia. Uh, What are your thoughts on players like these who play for franchise leagues around Mm. the world, live out of a suitcase, and then maybe get a call up for the nation? Oh, I think his selection was a no-brainer, personally. I, I think he's a really exciting uh, young player. He reminds me a lot of a young uh, Pollard from the West Indies. Similar power, yeah. similar impact down the order. It is the hardest place to bat, is down at, you know, down at sort of 5, 6, 7 in T20 cricket. Um, you know, the easiest place to bat is at the top of the order, and that's not saying that those that are doing it well at the top of the order have got an easy gig, mm-hmm. but it, it, it is hard yards batting down the order when you've suddenly got 12 balls, 20 runs to win, right. that type of stuff, and you're expected to hit the first or second ball out of the ground. Tim David can do that. So to answer your question around him being selected out of leagues, I think that's just the the nature of the beast we have at the moment. Mm-hmm. He doesn't play red ball cricket. He hasn't been selected to play Sheffield Shield cricket in Australia. So his avenue of playing cricket in Australia is through 50 over cricket and big bash cricket. He then got a reputation to, you know, in that right. format of the game and got picked up by various leagues and his his reputation globally on that T20 platform has grown because of it. And Australia could not ignore what he's been doing Um, and you know players that can do what he can do and Pollard and players like that they're rare they're very rare they're very hard to walk in and hit the first or second ball out of the ground no, you're right. When, when, when you look at some of those extraordinary players with T20 cricket and the power that they've got, where do you see the role, and, and the scheduling is so hard at cricket, where do you see the role of 50 over one day international cricket over the next five, ten years? Um, good question. It's a question you probably need to ask the ICC. <laughs> um, I, I still think there's a there's a place for 50 over cricket. Uh, you know, I have a, it's definitely a, a soft spot in my heart with 50 over cricket purely because... I think there's a, a real art to that game. I know that this day and age, people want things here and now and want instant results. But I, I think people that appreciate the game can see, uh, you know, the players, whether it be you know batsmen or bowlers, uh, that perfect the 50 over game. You, you admire what they do, um, and I, I still think it's a good television product. You know, well, there's more people, ads for there's more ads for well, broadcasters. There you go. <laughs> there's more, more ads, but yeah. but but I think you know it's still a good product to watch. Yeah, there's a lot. There's nearly like an avalanche of T20 cricket, uh, which I th- yeah, there's a lot. There's nearly like an avalanche of T20 cricket, uh, which I think is good and it's good for the game because it's engaging all different. Um, uh, groups of people to attract to our game. At the end of the day, the more people, the more eyeballs we get on cricket, the better. More eyeballs, you know, come through when you catch them young. And mm, that's a plan mm. for uh, Desert Vipers too. Uh, working and unearthing some players uh, at, at, at the grassroots level here mm. in the UAE, is it? Absolutely. Nothing gives you more pleasure from a coaching perspective is help discovering talent. Uh, whether that talent is young or whether that talent has been around for a while but hasn't had the opportunity. Right. Uh, you know, and that can be circumstances, that can be political circumstances, that can be just luck. You know, the sport, there's a lot of luck True. attached to sport. And suddenly with a new set of eyes looking at a player and the opportunity, you know, suddenly you find that you do unearth someone that might be in their 20s mm. that's playing pretty good cricket in, in in club cricket around the community here, but just for whatever reasons, the stars haven't aligned and they haven't had their chance. And suddenly they go out there, play... You know, a game for, let's say, Desert Vipers and perform with battle ball and suddenly, oh, where's this kid been? Well, he's been here all the time. It's just that he hasn't really had those opportunities. So 
hopefully we can find those players that mm-hmm. that that are those cricketers that have been part of the system for a while but also those you know those younger players coming through the system and accelerating their progress now when it, when it comes down to playing cricket in dubai it's obviously an attractive place to play you only have to follow uh, chris gale's instagram account uh, to realize how good dubai has been off the field is that is that a concern for you any of the internationals might want to come here and and uh, in, enjoy some of the fruits of dubai rather than the game yeah no one can keep pace with chris gale <laughs> that, that's that's impossible he's in a league of his own um I, look to, to be honest with you, that that is not an issue at all. Um, you know, th- this day and age, you know, at the end of the day, players' performances in tournaments like this and other tournaments around the world, that's their currency. Yeah. Uh, and if they're performing here, their currency is strong. So their opportunity elsewhere sure. grows yeah. in other franchises. So they're not sort of coming here and thinking, oh, wow, this is going to be a great month. I'm going to play a few rounds of golf, a couple of games of cricket, apparently. Yeah. Oh, hit the night boat live. parties and yeah. yeah, you know, jump on a few boats here and there, and you know, no. do the do, do what you do. But it, it, there may be an element of a couple of rounds of golf here and there. There might be also some downtime. But when it comes to the cricket and the preparation for that, it's uh, very professional. Uh, but I've always wanted to ask: Is it true that during that '99 World Cup for Australia? Sorry, I'm being Aussie here for no, a second. Please, now. Please go ahead. During that '99 World Cup, was was it you and Steve Waugh that put the numbers on the players' caps? Is that is that true that you were the one that said that that Steve said go out there and put the numbers on the caps to fire up the boys? Yeah, it is true. Um, yeah, we came up with the idea. Yeah, because uh, we just felt at that time the fifty over game. Well, put it this way: Test cricket had the significance of the baggy green. Right. Where fifty over cricket at the time had no real edge to it. Yeah, well done. You're playing a first game for Australia. There's your cap, and that was it. Yeah. We thought, well, let's put you know some significance to that cap. So we came up with the idea of of the number uh, to put some pride in put the some cap. Some pride in the yeah. cap, yeah, absolutely. And then you you went off and you had some tremendous success working with Sri Lanka, which was really their mm. almost their golden generation of players, mm. uh, if you will. Um, how did you instill that that sort of pride in, in the Sri Lankan side? I didn't have to instill it at all. They're a very proud nation, yeah. um, and they are an absolute privilege to work with. They're they're, they're such a resilient. Um, uh, country, you know, particularly you know what they've gone through historically, and you have to look at yep. over the last few decades what they've had to go through. Um, and as a cricketing nation, they do fight against the tide. You know, they don't have the finances that a lot of other countries that may have that they're competing, but they've got oodles of talent. They they have you know talented players coming out of every corner of that little island. And, and could we see a few of them in the Desert Vipers? Well, we got uh, Hasaranga yeah. there, so Which who yeah. I love. Oh, look, he's, he's an absolute brilliant. magician, isn't he? He's, he's, he's wonderful brilliant. to watch. So, you know, having having him uh, is is wonderful, um, along with all the other players that we have, and we hope that uh, you know they're well supported. Well, Tom Moody, it's been an honour having you here in the studios of TSB. Congratulations on your success, and thank you.